It is Thursday night. Time for another episode of Thrifty Business. Woo! My mic is, has a mind of its own today. What's going on? Hey, it's the big kahuna, Jason T. Smith, here in Las Vegas. And tonight, my lovely co-host is Debbie Weeder. Hi. And Debbie, where and are you I, at tonight? I am in Half Moon Bay, California, at the beach. It's spring break, so our my nieces, we were down. I got still got sand between my toes. I ran back in the hotel to do the show, and then we're running back out to see the sunset. Nice. And tonight we do have a live studio audience. There's Kim and Stacy, and Atocha's around here someplace. So if you hear any, a nap. You hear any giggles in the background, that's who you're going to be hearing from. And before we introduce our guests, let's get right to our first segment, as we always do. Time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week, I drink, I drink a different rum out of a different tiki mug, and I try and match it up to my guest, and I think I did a good job for tonight. So, without further ado, I'd like to welcome our guest, Jessica Januzic. Did I say it right, Jessica? Uh, Januzic. Same difference. All right. So, <laughs> Jessica, where did you? Uh, where were you born? I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. All right. So, the one of the top 10 greatest tiki bars is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So, here is the rum barrel. Woo! In the foundation room. It is a kick-ass bar. Nice. And awesome. Jessica's going to be talking about her bounty. She gets a lot of it, so she has to sell it in mass quantity. So tonight, we are drinking bounty rum. <laughs> Sweet. Perfect. Yeah, I think that was a pretty good match up there. I, think yeah, I, I like up. that. And I have water, bottled water. <laughs> and I'm nope. just sipping on hard cider, some angry. Right, there we go. Yeah. Cocktails for everyone. All right, so we're going to say... Uh, Adios to Jessica for about half an hour. Just make Bye. sure you have your nose when I turn you back on. <laughs> a little bit. Bye. All right, let's get right to our first segment. <laughs> Time for our scores of the week, where Debbie and I let you know what we sold. These are typically going to be bolos. Be on the lookout. Things that you should be keeping your eyes peeled for when you're out thrifting. Yeah. Get your way. Okay, I love this shirt. It's hard to see, but it shimmers. When you move it, it had blue shimmeries. It was just gorgeous. It's a Charlie Lapson disco shirt, and it sold for $39. And it, it's just, you know, a really thin little shirt, and I had it in my profit piles, and I finally dug it out. And you cannot see in these pictures the blue shimmer. That It's just gorgeous. I can imagine. So you can see a little bit of it there. Uh, I can see it there a little bit. <laughs> I can imagine in a disco when dancing with that. Oh, that's that's. So I was happy. How, how old are you? I can imagine that in a disco. Oh yeah, Donna Summers. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> and these, I went to my friend's estate sale. These are actually uh, copper doorknobs off her cabinets. I mean, they got the patina, they're all yucky, yucky, but I sold them. I took a best offer of $39. Somebody had offered me like $15 and I just held out and kept countering and finally someone came along and I accepted $39. I paid for the shipping, but that was a fun little seller. It reminded me of the doorknobs that I grew up with when I was a little girl in our house. Back to vintage, oh, yeah, I'm vintage. That's cute. These kind of surprised me. I got these at a state sale, Owl Salt and Salt and Pepper Shakers, and I paid fifty cents for them, and they sold for twenty nine dollars. And they came, they came in their own little styrofoam box, the original box. And the person that bought them was so adamant that I get them quickly because she was going out of the country, and these she was taking them somewhere with her out of the country. So maybe they were a gift for somebody. Have salt and pepper will travel. Yeah, yeah, but twenty nine dollars, twenty nine ninety nine. That surprised me, but I got it, so I'm happy. What a tiki mug! What? Yeah, I wonder where I learned about these. This is called drinking for free when you go to Trader Sam's Tiki Bar at Disneyland. This is the Hitchhiking Ghosts Tiki Mug, and we paid twenty five dollars. Sold it for seventy nine ninety nine. 
So I was very happy with that. They came in different colors. This was, I think, the last color that they sold. Um, yeah, they've changed that color out a few times. I have all, all, uh, all three or four of them. Because nice. nerd collectors need them all. Of course all right. they Let's hop into my scores now. We've talked about this in the past, and, and, and we're going to talk about it right now. Sometimes uh, the whole is worth more than the parts, and sometimes the part is worth more than the whole. In this instance, I had two. I had a UTFO, which is a rap group from the 80s, a uh, 12-inch single of uh, their song Roxanne, Roxanne. Roxanne, Roxanne, I want to be your man. And then the real Roxanne did her answer 12-inch, and then UTFO also had an album called Skeezer Pleaser. So I put those, I picked them up for uh, two bucks each at a thrift store. And I put them, put this little group together and sold them for $49.99. Nice. Well done. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm getting into selling purses and I sold this uh, quilted Hello Kitty purse for $35.99. I think I paid uh, six bucks for it and it didn't really have the Hello Kitty kitty on it. It just says Hello Kitty quilted in the purse. And, That's uh, wasn't listed for all that long, so that was a nice quick sale. And I told people I sold some shoes. How about some Gucci white shoes, just like Clark Griswold would love to wear? <laughs> I sold these for eighty dollars. Nice, eleven and a half. That's a good size. With the box, and last but not least, just sold this today. This vintage Woolrich uh, beige, blue, and gold plaid wool coat. It was a forty-four large. And wow. it's sold for 50 bucks, and it's off to an international locale, which you will see in next episodes, Where in the World. Oh, and yeah. And I paid that... uh, $5.99 for that. So you were asking 100 for that, and then you did? Yeah, took... you know, I, and I'm, I'm running a sale right now, 50% off most okay. of my stuff. I needed to jazz some sales up, and I'm doing pretty good. All right, you've seen our scores. Now it's time for... <laughs> Time for our duds of the week brought to you by Worth Point. If Debbie and I had used Worth Point, we probably wouldn't have these duds. The schmata on my head is a bow that I just happened to stick on my head. And everyone was like, hey, it's like Easter Bunny year. So I thought I'd just wear it tonight. And I'm a big girl. Yep. All right, Debbie, your first dud to me doesn't look like a dud based on this price. I know, but that's not what it sold for. This uh, one listed well. for, I think I had it listed for three years. It's kind of, I thought it was an adorable mug because it's 3D and every Easter I think it's going to sell. And you know, when I say think about things and they're going to sell, the day before I was working, all of a sudden I thought that Easter Bunny bonnet mug is going to sell. And the next day we got an offer for $20, which I took. So I had it at $39 for three years. And they paid shipping. So I was happy to see that move on to where its new home is. And then this one too. What did I sell? Uh, this was a puzzle. I got it because I was going to FBA it a couple years ago. And then it, it really wasn't worth it. And I quit doing FBA. So we finally listed. It wasn't listed too long. And I took an offer of $13.99. And the buyer paid shipping. So it wasn't, you know, to me it's kind of a dud. But... Somebody's happy. And I think I paid like $3.99 for it. So I didn't make a lot of money. But someone's going to be happy with it. All right. So here's my first dud. Uh, it's a wallpaper border. <clears throat> We've talked about wallpaper. Wallpaper borders doing quite well. I had this listed for a long time. It was one of the items in my 50% off sale and it finally sold. I only paid a buck for it. So when the smoke clears, I still made, you know, five or six bucks or whatever. But it's That's cute. That's nice wallpaper. Yeah, it just wasn't all that exciting. But this is the one that bums me out. When I was running the 50% off sale, a couple items that I selected, I shouldn't have selected, this being one of them. This is a vintage 3XL shirt. You never see vintage in 3XL. And here's why it really bums me out. The person who bought it is a Hawaiian shirt reseller. They're one of the biggest around. Wow. And when I see their address, because they buy things for me from time to time, I'm like, damn, I sold it too little. If they're buying it from me to flip, I sold it for too little. Crap. Yeah, but you had it listed at 30. And you how long was it listed? Not too long. I shouldn't have selected this one. It was a mistake. So that's oh. where it ended up being a dud. It was one of it actually came out of my closet. I, it's too big for me anymore. So uh, I'm you know letting go of my but you don't find vintage in 3XL. I probably should have priced it higher anyway. So you're the dud. Even so the big I, so I am the dud. 
<laughs> All right, now it's time for where in the world did our stuff go? Debbie and I and all my co-hosts uh, ship internationally. Why limit your potential customer database to 330 million when you can have a potential customer database of 7.4 billion customers? That's we right. have shipped worldwide our entire careers online, and I started doing that in uh, the spring of 2000. So I love selling worldwide, and we love sharing with you what we sold and where it went. Yes, my video game, I think, what's it called? I can't see. Paper Paperboy. I got this in a box of a whole bunch of video games a couple years ago, and then I finally found them in the garage, and we've been selling them. It went to Stone, uh, Stony Plain, Alberta, Canada. So our friends up in Canada, you know, so many people around the world need what we have. So I'm happy to ship international. Don't you know? Don't you know? Okay, mine's going to be a little trickier to, <laughs> to pronounce. Uh, I, again, I'm selling my fat clothes, and so I've been putting generic sets of shorts together. So I put three pair of 42s together, a dark khaki, a light khaki, and a plaid, and it's going to um, in Hungary. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ask me how to pronounce that? Yeah, I, I listen how to pronounce it, but uh, I, I just butchered it right this second. Do I still have it up? <laughs> no, I don't have it up. Uh, but, you know, hey. You put three pair of 42 waist shorts together. You don't. You never know they're going to Hungary, but it's cool. It's cool that our stuff goes all over the world. That's right. All right, now it's time for me to move the wrong page. <laughs> our thrifty tips of the week, little tips and tricks to help you when you're in the thrift store to make you a better thrifter. Oh, I'll go first. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I was in Dallas this past week teaching some classes, and I had a rare day off. And what do I do on my day off? Do I go see the sites of Dallas, like Dealey Plaza? Heck no. I go CD shopping. And so I was digging through the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and 2000 CDs. And I looked below, and I thought, hmm, what are those carts down there, those little baskets down there? Well, green and red, that's all their Christmas stuff. Now, I should have taken another picture because oh. the row went on forever. So I actually sat on a little stool and picked for like 20 straight minutes under the counters. A lot of record stores have stuff under the counter. And so you got to get sit. And usually they'll have a stool or something for you to sit on when you got to work low. And had I not worked low, I would not have found this holy grail of Christmas CDs. That's awesome. You needed Stacy with you. <laughs> which is Dick Clark's Rock and Roll Christmas. It's a two CD set. I paid uh, $25 for it. At Christmas time, and this has been out of print forever. At Christmas time, this will sell for one hundred and fifty dollars. Awesome! Holy grails of Christmas CDs. So if I did not bend over, I would not have found that. You always got to bend over. Yep, look down low. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when you're thrifting, don't take the time to stop and look up every item on eBay. Go shopping first, fill your shopping cart. And then when you're done and you feel like you've gone through the whole store, then you can go off to the side and look at uh, look up prices on things you're not sure about. Because while you're sitting there looking up a price on something, I'm right behind you grabbing all the good stuff. <laughs> fill it, fill your cart, because you can always go put things back. And then also, like I was watching a lady one day, she had a cake pan in her cart that I wanted and she was walking away from the cash register so I turned around and followed her she put that back on the shelf and I grabbed it right behind as soon as she walked off so keep an eye on what's in other people's carts because they might have something really <laughs> good and you may see them put it back on the shelf yeah and I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce off that point real quick uh, because this is one of those items that I was watching somebody hold and the second I heard the metal of the hanger touch the metal of the rack I was, his hand wasn't even away. I was reaching in to grab it. <laughs> That's awesome. And it is, and I, I think I've shown this before. Yeah, it is a 1989 Blackjack felt from Caesar's Palace oh, that was fashioned cool. into a fully lined jacket with tags. And this was awesome. $5 and some dork put it back. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I have totally agree. We have to be watching eagle eyes, watching everything that's going on. And then, you know, when they're bringing the, the carts out, too. You don't want to be sitting there on your phone looking for solds when a fresh cart comes out from the back. So save. You can do your research later. 
Heck yeah. All right. We've done our eBay or our thrifting tips. Now it's time for. <laughs> you have got to be shipping me, where Debbie and I will give you tips and tricks what to do and what not to do <clears throat> when it comes to shipping. Because shipping is probably one of the biggest pains that people have when they sell online. So I, I just copied one of mine for you, Debbie. Okay. Thank you. Um, please. Put the packing slip in the box or in the package. I know in the Facebook groups, people go back and forth. I don't want to waste a piece of paper. But think about it. When, when you open a package and you have the packing slip, the, buyer, the seller's name, what the item is, how much you paid for it, it's just a nice professional way. And think about this. How many packages get lost through the post office when they open it, if there's no packing slip in there, or if the and sometimes the mailing labels do fall off the packages, it's lost mail now because they can't figure out who, who to send it to, to return it to, or who needs to have it. So putting a packing slip in, it's just a great way and write thank you on it. You can color on them, you can edit your packing slips like Jason has done here, put your logo on there. So please let's put this argument to rest and put your packing slip in your packages to make your customer happy. Now, although I knew that was your tip, I wasn't even thinking about it. Guess what I have right here in my hands, Deb? What? I had a package that the label got messed up and they couldn't, oops, they couldn't deliver it. And so because they opened it, they read my invoice, they were able to mail it back to me. Now, of course, they could have mailed it on to the customer, schmucks. Yeah. But they mail them back to me. So so you're right. Without that invoice, this would just be lost. The post office, from what I've been told for years, has huge auctions every year because of all the lost mail and the packages they have. There's nothing they can do with them. So they just auction them off. So, you know, that one extra little piece of paper that's going to go in there, your, your buyer's going to be happy and for it. Right. Thank you. All right. So I tease, <clears throat> excuse me, I tease this on the uh, Facebook Live I did right before the show. These are very special priority boxes. And what's special about them, in case you guys don't know, you can get eBay branded priority boxes from eBay and the USPS. A lot of people do not know that. And I know some people don't like to advertise the fact that they're selling on eBay, but others do. They love the eBay tape. They love the eBay stickers. And you might as well have an eBay box to go with it. What the hey, go for the trifecta. And here's where you find them. Because it is a little tricky to find it. And I'll leave this up there for a second. It is usps.supplies.ebay.com slash uspsweb slash catalog. Now, they only have those uh, six boxes you see there, so they don't have everything. But it is nice when you can send out branded boxes. Yeah, it looks professional. Yes. <laughs> oh, so people are like, ooh, eBay USPS boxes. See, some people knew it and some people didn't. And I'd forgotten about them. I ordered some the other day. I'm like, oh, I'll share that tonight. Yeah, I didn't know about them either. I mean, it's, I've seen them, but I didn't know where people got them from. Yeah, it's it's like magic. Yay. <laughs> All right, now it's time for... Our eBay tips of the week. Little tips and tricks to help you on eBay. Oh, and yes, people are asking. They are free boxes, just like all priority boxes are. Okay. my This is our storage system in our garage, part of it. When we accept, I mean, when we get a best offer, I do not accept it or counter it until I have found that item and I know that I possess it, that I haven't lost it. It's not damaged. I do have it because I think it is so silly to accept an offer and then find out, oops, I lost that thing three months ago or I cannot find it. Because when you accept an offer from somebody, you're saying, yeah, I got the item. I'm ready to go with it. So always, we always check to make sure we've got the pack, the item. I know where it's at, and I have it sitting out. When if they go through with the deal, I've got the package, the item ready to go. So I know it's not lost. Now, when people buy stuff and I can't find the package, that's a different story. But if you're going to accept an offer, it's pretty silly to not be able to know where it's at. Yeah, I, so I accepted an offer on a pair of pants last night or this morning, and we went to look for them. We could not find them, and oh. my assistant looked, and I looked. And I looked in the same place like three times. I was about to give up, and I'm si I'm sitting where Kim is sitting, and my assistant's here. And I look over here, and I forgot we have a new 
pants shelf. But I totally forgot uh, about it. And so I was sitting there and I'm like, oh, there's our pants. <laughs> I was ready to, I was pretty much ready to cancel because I had nowhere to look at this point. But you know, little bonus tip if you're gonna move stuff from a tub to a shelf, make sure you remember you move stuff from a tub to a shelf and label the shelf. Because had we labeled it, I probably would have noticed it. And use your custom fields, put in there the new pants yeah. shelf. All right, yeah. so here's my little tip. So uh, Kim and I went uh, thrifting a, a little bit this afternoon, and they had one of the, those four-foot-tall Melissa and Doug giraffes at the thrift store. So I wanted to see what they were selling for, and I looked it up on my phone. Now, I always teach people to take pictures of their items, and especially their opening picture, to be a very close-up of whatever you're selling for people who are shopping on their phones. Now, the iPhone 10 is a nice big screen. But believe it or not, in my class this past Saturday in Dallas, there was a lady with a flip phone. Oh, no. <laughs> you can't shop on eBay, but there are others who still rock like a 5 or a 5S, which is a very small iPhone <clears throat> compared to nowadays. So you've got to make sure your opening picture is good. And if you've never, ever looked at your own stuff on mobile, please go do it. So, Deb, when I looked up giraffes, the first two are nice big pictures. Look at the third one. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So then I click on the third one. There's the picture of a four foot tall giraffe. Um, how did they get it so small? I have <laughs> no idea. And I think it's by Target. I think Target's selling it. So Target has the worst photo I have ever oh seen. That is crazy. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, no one has ever paid attention to their pictures are you kidding me i mean it's still sold for 80 but dang that's a four foot tall giraffe <laughs> that look it looks like it'd be a little earring or something i know isn't that crazy so yes if you've never looked at your own products on mobile please go <laughs> please do it tonight after the show because some of you will be, will be surprised some of you'll be surprised on your pictures and your description yeah. so make sure you're always checking your stuff good idea Yep. All right, our last segment of the week is, I forget which one I use. We'll go with this one. <laughs> Trendy bolos. Yay. What's hot and what's not, well, not what's not, what's hot right now? Things you should be selling. Oh, Deb, I forgot to tell you. I only picked two of the 27 you sent me. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. Debbie sent so many, it could be just one whole show on Trendy Bolos. <laughs> but I picked the two I like because they're very timely. They're okay. So, surprise, Debbie. The first one I picked was Jeffrey the Giraffe from Toys R Us. Look how much this sold for $194. And what's happened is um, he was on, I think it was Jimmy Kimmel the other night. And all of a sudden, everybody wants this Jeffrey Giraffe. And they're not all going for a lot of money. And there's all those little Funko plastic vinyl little toy thingies are going for like $150. So I don't know if where you could find those. Maybe your kids have one. But when you're out thrifting and you see any of these Jeffrey giraffes, check them. Because then I don't know how long this, you know, this fad of everybody wanting Jeffrey giraffe. But they're also going out of business. Toys R Us is filing bankruptcy. Going out of business and the founder died all within two days. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. yeah. So they actually, they actually paused their going out of business for one day because the founder died. He was 94, so he had a okay. good life. But, yeah, so in the news, and they're hot. Yeah, so keep an eye <clears throat> for anything Jeffrey Giraffe. And then the other thing that's in the news because it's coming up next week or this week. Yeah. Um, the Masters is, what, April 5th through the 8th or something like that. And Tiger Woods is in it again this year, so the ticket prices went up 20%. So I think there's just more – interest in it and even anything from augusta the golf course even if it doesn't say masters on it seems to be doing good right now too so keep your eyes out for anything that's you know the golf tournament or just this golf course you just never know and and you know especially vintage you go to an estate sale you might f be surprised what you're going to find from from the past the vintage parts of these things the hats the jackets anything that's the uh, masters now that's coming up this weekend in a month is probably the not probably it is the biggest superhero movie of all time what if you are not into superhero movies this is the avengers movie and i counted there are 21 avengers in this movie wow and i'm counting loki in there too loki is thor's brother 
But there are so many main characters in one movie. And now we got Spider-Man in it. We got Guardians of the Galaxy in it. We've got, uh, you know, uh, obviously Iron Man and Captain America and Thanos and Doctor Strange. And so you have all these characters. And the reason I'm bringing it up, even though it's still a month out, I sold this yesterday. Here's a Halloween costume for a kid for Thor that I've had since October 1st. And I'm guessing, just a hunch, the reason it's sold now is some kid's going to wear this to the debut of the movie. So if you have any Avenger stuff, definitely, definitely get your Avenger stuff up right now because this movie will just be crushing it. Crushing it. And, uh... Hmm. The one thing, oh no, I, I see it now. Black Panther's in this poster. Black Panther is now like the officially the largest superhero movie of all time. And since Black Panther is going to be in this movie, uh, and I missed him when I counted, so there's 22, 22 superheroes, uh, it'll be amazing. So make sure you get all your stuff up to. Uh, Sabrina just asked Aquaman. Sabrina, we cannot be friends. That is DC Comics. This is Marvel Comics. Uh, <laughs> cross those streams, we can't be friends. It's all about Marvel, no, people. The only one I know is Iron Man. Is Captain America in there? Yes, he's in all black with a long hair to the left there. Okay, because I'm not a big into these movies, but Captain America kind of got me hooked in Iron Man. So this must be wild with all those those people all going all different directions at one time and doing all their stuff. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine trying to put 21 main characters into a movie? And I'm not counting. I'm not counting the villain. That has 21 superheroes, good guys, in one movie. And it's so big, it's actually going to be two movies, but it's insane. That's so okay. make sure your stuff is up and uh, you got it listed. All right. I'm going to answer a couple quick questions before we do a little housekeeping, and then we'll get Jessica in there. Uh, Jersey Jane uh, said, how well does Easter stuff sell compared to Christmas or other holidays? Easter stuff does okay. The couple things I had up for Easter didn't sell. Since it's going to be Good Friday tomorrow, I'm guessing they ain't selling this year. Yeah. Uh, Christmas is really good, obviously. And Halloween is the Mac Daddy of all uh, holidays because of costumes and such. Vintage, I think vintage Easter would be good. You know, you can find some older pieces. People do collect the eggs, you know, all the little decorated eggs and things like that. But you, gotta, you wanna get them up early too, like here for January or February, so people can start looking for them. All right, so a little housekeeping before we get Jessica in here. If you're in the Seeker Beach, hello, Seeker Beachcombers. How are ya? Tomorrow is my March webinar. Nothing like coming in right at the end of the month, but hey, that's how it works sometimes. Tomorrow is all about Tiki Ephemera. And to give you a preview, see this giant stack? That is all the props for tomorrow. Wow. I got lots of props for tomorrow. I am becoming the carrot top of the eBay world. Full of props. <laughs> full of props. So uh, that is a noon East Coast, 9 a.m. West Coast tomorrow morning. And I just finally announced the dates uh, for my St. Louis classes. So what I'm doing is I'm touring the country, hitting major cities, a lot of cities that I've not been to, and teaching a two-day class. You can take both days or just one or the other. We do an in-store class, uh, in-thrift store class, where we walk section to section, spend about three and a half hours in the thrift store, going over what you should buy, and more importantly, what you should skip. <clears throat> excuse me, and then we have a four and a half hour classroom class where it's in a meeting room, good Lord, <clears throat> uh, where it's in a meeting room at a hotel, and we just did the Dallas one, we had sold out, it was standing room only, nice. and that is, uh, I go A to Z, soup to nuts, I teach you about the bolos you should be looking for, I teach you about how to take quality pictures, how to write quality listings, how to use all the tools on your cell phone, it's amazing, the like six or seven apps every thrifter should have, I would say every single person in my class was missing at least two and some are missing like five of the seven. Wow. So we go over that, teach you how to ship. I go over a long, big segment on how to ship and I bring all the different boxes and many, many people in the class didn't even have a third of the boxes that are free at your disposal from the USPS. So we're gonna talk about that. And if you go to classwithjason.com, you can get signed up right now. And the little bonus for this class is this lady right here. Kim is going to be with me as my co-instructor in the thrift store class. So when I have two instructors, I can take a much bigger class out because it's easier when you have two people. So Kim's going to be helping me with that. And then Kim's going to be helping uh, probably in the classroom class too, giving us a little speech. 
And so uh, if you have any questions, let me know. If not, go to classwithjason.com. Get signed up. You'll see the hotel we're at. And uh, looking forward to St. Louis. Now, unfortunately, there are zero tiki bars in St. Louis. Actually, there's one, but it's bad rated. Uh oh. There's a tiki bar in Jefferson City, which is two hours away. So, yes, I will be driving to Jefferson City to hang out at a tiki bar. So, if you want to hang out with us, we're going to Jefferson City. And last but not least, before we get Jessica on, hey, what was announced today? Officially, finally, one week late. Yay! Open is open for registration. A lot of people have registered, but a lot of first timers, going to be going to be first timers, have a bazillion questions. One of them sent my mom like a laundry list of questions, and mom and I didn't have a topic yet for this week's episode. So we are going to talk all things eBay Open. We're going to talk. We're going to give you uh, pictures from the last two year years highlights. We're going to tell you everything you need to know about the event itself, the parties they throw, the parties I throw, uh, Vegas in general, getting to and fro, traveling about. So that is Saturday, this Saturday, awesome. uh, 9 a.m. West Coast, noon East Coast. Had to be early because my mom's such a rock star. She's driving two hours to go to a tiki bar party in Pittsburgh. So you know, we had to get the show done so she could get out and head over to Pittsburgh to go to a tiki bar party. Good for you, Peggy. I mean, my mom's a rock star. What can I say? Yes, she is. Sign so, up for even Open. You will not be disappointed. Yes. A lot of people think, oh, it's $275, but it's like, no, they feed us. We have drinks. They take care of us. Don't and give it away is my Saturday show. Don't give away my Saturday oh, show. Right. <laughs> just, I get so excited about eBay Open. Oh, I know. And that's what we're going to talk about. Some people are, you know, have balked at the price. And once we're done with you on Saturday, you'll be like, oh, shoot, I got to go because it sounds amaze balls. Yes, it's. I've been every. I've been to eBay Radio Party since 2009 in Vegas, and then when eBay Open took over two years ago, I've, I haven't missed one yet, and I won't. It's just too much fun, and all the learning. And a lot of times, you learn something you didn't even think about because someone starts talking about something, you're like, "Wait, what's that?" And then you go home with a whole new tip to make money. So, a uh, good question, and I'll have more details very soon. Uh, Karen says the class you're having on July 23rd the same as the classes you're doing in various locations around the country. No, my thrift class on steroids is a whole different class. It is me and four or five other instructors where we'll sit in the classroom for a couple hours. And then, and it's going to be a huge class. I think we had 50 last year. And then we'll all go off into the thrift store. So it'll be me, four or five instructors you just learned from, and then five other instructors helping you out in the thrift store. So there'll be 10 instructors working with you in the thrift store and all the different sections. So it was an amazing class last year. It was an ambitious uh, undertaking to have a class of 50 and have all these co-instructors, but it was awesome. So that'll be the Monday before eBay open. And those of you in the Seeker Beach, we are going to have the Seeker Beach Bash again. It'll be a little bit different this year, but I'll, I'll give you details soon. And that'll be the Friday, the day after open. It will be earlier in the day. So those of you who don't want to stay a Friday night, because it does get a little bit expensive, to stay on a Friday night in the summertime in Vegas. It will be a daytime party, so you can book like an evening flight out of town. So you don't have to worry about another uh, night's hotel. All right, but more details coming very, very soon. But right now, let's get to our guest. Whoops. Hey, everybody. It is Jessica. What is, <clears throat> man, what is happening, Jessica? How are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Great. Good, good, good. I'm excited to be here. Yes, yeah, so excited to see you. I wanted to, to tell everybody how you and I met. Okay. I was part of the um, eBay education trainers, uh, education specialists, and I had my name in the directory, and I got a phone call one day from this lady, and she's explaining she's a single mom, and could I, could she take a class with me? And as I talked with her, I said, I'm not going to charge you. I just want to help you. And it turns out we only live 10 minutes apart. Right. And so I just started hooking her up in Facebook groups and, you know, trying to help her any way I can. And we've just developed a friendship. And now here she is on the show. Hey. Yeah, I remember you made a group. Uh, it was just the Debbie and Jessica group. And you would just kind of send me links of, you know, nice resources and everything. And it was so sweet that you took the time out to, you know, just share what knowledge that you you knew. And 
the connections that I made through you have been just incredible. So I was very happy that we met. It's well. eBay radio party right away that first year. You yes, were... right away. <laughs> so, is, so is eBay radio, that, is that eBay radio where we first met Jessica? It is. Yeah. In 2015, I believe. Yeah. yeah I, I, and I was racking my brain, but as soon as Debbie said eBay radio, I'm like, oh yeah, that's where I met Jessica. Yep. <laughs> I've met a lot of people. So it starts to get a little foggy where I've met everybody, but uh, that one, it, it clicked. She got the infamous picture of you without your top on. Remember we had that party? Oh, that's right. Flamingo and, and everybody's like, what's going on? But you At had the, the, um, was Stacey. it the work point party? Yeah, Stacy was yeah. sitting there and we were all together, but it was funny. Oh, yeah. 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 All right, so you were born in uh, Milwaukee, home of one of the greatest tiki bars in the country. Yes. Did, you, did you grow up in Milwaukee too, or, or did you leave soon after you were born? No, no, I grew up there. I left when I was a teenager and then I lived in Vegas um, for about four years. Yep. <laughs> and, um, you know, I settled in California um, probably about 2006 and I've been here ever since. So um, I'm a Midwest girl at heart, but I'm a Cali girl now. <laughs> Cali yeah, I was a Midwest boy. I tried Cali for four years. At the end of three and a half, I had had enough. Really? <laughs> I, uh, I love it out here. I do too. Yeah. So what? What? What took you to? Uh, what took you to Cali? What? 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 What said? Hey, I, I'm heading west, and I'm going to plot my butt in Cali. Uh, well, I had family in Sacramento, and um, it's funny because in between Vegas and California, I actually moved back to the Midwest, but I lived in Minneapolis for a few years as well. And when I moved back, it was just difficult for me to readjust. Like even though I grew up in Wisconsin after being in Las Vegas and, and having that taste of West Coast flavor, I couldn't, you know, I just wasn't happy. So I went ahead and, and decided to come back out on the West Coast and um, make California my home because Vegas, I don't know, like Vegas was cool, but it's very fast paced. So you got to you got to be a special kind of person. <laughs> no, I was just young at the time. I was like, oh, maybe I need uh, something different. But I, I think I made a good choice. It's it's great out here. Yeah, it is. So it was it, you go, you go, you get end up in Cali. And did you have a job? Did you have a career? What were you doing at that time? Or you're just kind of like. Uh, OK, in California, um, when I first came out here, I went ahead and certified as a medical assistant and I got a license in skincare and my goal was to work in like a medical spa um, and that kind of didn't pan out. Um, so I, I tried a lot of different angles, right? Like trying to figure out what my career was going to be in my 20s. And I had a really nice job that I actually let go of um, shortly before I started selling on eBay, because at the time I just wanted to be around my son more. And, you know, I said, I'm going to go ahead and resign from this position. And I started selling on eBay as a hobby for, you know, several years. And it was just like a side hustle, you know, and I kept working other jobs or whatever, but it helped supplement whatever income I was making from those jobs. Right. And then right before eBay radio party in 2015, I had just quit my job at Starbucks. That's when um, you called me. <laughs> yep. I had just quit my job and I was just like, you know what? Cause I had been selling on eBay long enough where I said, I bet if I really work hard and put more effort into this, I can make what I'm making at Starbucks on eBay. And I did within the first couple months. So I never looked back. <laughs> right, since you brought it up. How do you make a triple venti, half sweet, non-fat caramel <laughs> macchiato? Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> half fat half sweet half half the amount of pumps um you can use you know one percent milk or whatever um triple venti it already comes with i mean if it's a hot drink you would add a shot if it was iced it already has three shots so boom all right there you go you can just drop the mic right there I was, boom. You, know, you know i don't drink coffee so i was looking up like the most complicated thing i could try and get yeah, google i've heard it all yeah. i've heard it all yeah i was i was there for almost three years so yeah that's a long time yeah yeah welcome to ebay <laughs> you've been thank doing you. thank you <laughs> all um, right so ebay comes calling and mm -hmm. what, you remember what the first thing you sold was or, or around you know one of the one of the first things you sold one of the first things i sold ever was actually a college textbook i believe mm. yours or one you like you know kind of I think it was my fiance's at the time. 
Yeah. And Did you know? Did the bug bite you right that second? Um, no. So I didn't sell anything after that for for some <laughs> for some years, right? And but, but I'm a thrifter at heart, so like I love shopping at the thrift stores for personal, you know, for my personal um, household. And I remember. I just got to a point where I was like, okay. And I think like a lot of newbies, I started looking at clothes and I didn't want to buy anything that I couldn't wear if it didn't sell. <laughs> so I was only buying like larger size women's clothing to sell or whatever. And one of the first things that like really got me hooked, I think, is I had this top and I had it on auction and, you know, a bidding war suit. And I wound up selling the top for like $51. And I was like, and I paid, you know, maybe a dollar fifty for this. I was like, "Wow, this is amazing!" You know, and it was just all, you know, uphill from there. I was like, "Okay." And then eventually, I was like, "Okay, I need to stop just buying stuff that I would wear." And I would slowly branch out. And then I started um, sourcing men's clothing. And I love my my male customers. Yeah. Like I love my female customers too. Don't get me wrong, but my male customers. They just seem to be a lot more men in general. You know, they're pretty easy to please. So, <laughs> I just feel like ultimately they're gonna sniff the armpits and decide, okay, it's clean. And, you know, <laughs> it fits, and you know, it's like that meme: if it if it fits, I sit. Like that's it. You know, if they put it on and it fits, and all the buttons are there, they're happy. You know. Now, um, who do you get more returns from, male or female? Female. Female gets you get more returns. Do you get a lot of returns because you're selling clothing? No, my return rate is probably about three percent. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And you sell mostly just clothing, right? I mean, do you sell things besides clothing? Uh I do occasionally, like whenever I'm at Savers or whatnot, um, if I see like a graphic calculator or something, I'll pick that up because I know that those are usually good flips. Okay. Um and just other little whatnots, but I've been trying to limit picking up those things so I can just kind of be known for, you know, I'm trying to build my brand around a specific niche. Um, but yeah, it's purses, shoes, um, clothing, you know, I sell a lot of ties. Oh, um, nice. You yes. sold one tie I saw once for $275. Yes. <laughs> yep. Well, that was amazing. And it sold really fast. Free ten, free 10 suits or what? <laughs> I'm sorry? So was it buy a tie and then get free oh. 10 suits with it? I'm like, <laughs> No, <laughs> what? Does it tie itself? Just the tie itself. <laughs> yep. I, I was like, oh, that was such a rush. That was awesome. Do you have your son help you with your eBay business or your boyfriend, your husband? Um, my son helps me more so with um my scheduled pickups um for the bulk side of my business. Um, mm -hmm. but I I work by myself. I don't have any employees when it comes to listing, taking pictures, shipping, stuff like that. That's all me. Okay. Wow. That's great. Yeah. So, oh, I'm sorry, but my, my, I only have a little over 200 items listed in my eBay store right now because my bulk aspect of the business has started really taking off. So I don't have as much time to list in the store anymore one by one. Okay. That's um, nice. Let's talk about the side of the business. So, okay. so one day you're just sitting around listing things and you couldn't see over the mountain of clothes, right? Is that how it happened? Not quite. Not okay. quite. <laughs> so it's not everybody. I feel like any clothing seller can relate just like in my group and on the picture that you have on the little promo. Um, my cover photo is this huge mountain of clothes. And that's what it feels like as a clothing seller, like in your house or wherever you're working, because everywhere you look, you just see piles of clothing. Um, but it, it wasn't just, oh, I, I have this death pile, so I better start, you know, whatever. Um, it's when my sourcing methods changed and I stopped sourcing at the thrift stores and I started um Basically, a friend of mine is a stylist and had referred me to one of her sources. And once I made that connection, it it that's where it really took off because I started sourcing in such a high volume. And I was like, oh my goodness. And at first, you know, going through it, it was difficult because I saw potential in everything. As a reseller, I'm just like, I could sell that, I could flip that, you know, whatever. But <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I had I I've definitely learned as I've been doing this now for about two years selling in bulk that I can't um I have to be very 
choosy. You know, I'm, I'm particular about what I keep and what I recycle. And the, the things that I keep is just kind of split between me and my buyers. Um, you know, so there's really not much separation. I'm not going to send anything to someone that I wouldn't list in my store. Um, oh. so I, don't, I don't, when I, when I'm sorting, I don't say this is for me, this is for them. You know, it's all the same pile. And then I just, or not pile, but you know, all the same. <laughs> and I just say, okay, you know, as I have an order, I go to process the order and I, you know, re fill it up based on how many pieces they request. So this would be great. There are people that are housebound. Like I think about our friend, Tim Taylor. Yes. It's not for some people to get out. So this would be a great source, a way for them to source clothing and have it just mm -hmm. comes right to their house. And then they Absolutely. just. Person. That's, Absolutely. That's a great service that you have. I've had a lot of people thank me and it, it, you know, it's almost brought me to tears because, you know, they may have limited mobility. They may not have the time because they work a full-time job and they sell on eBay to go and source in the thrift stores, you know, and they're just like, thank you for what you do. I really appreciate it. Um, because there are other places where you can buy clothes in bulk online, but I feel like the service that I'm providing is a lot more tailored than those arrangements because, you know, it, it may be like returns or whatever from wherever. And then you got to wonder how, what percentage of the items that you're buying in your bulk lot are damaged or, you know, whatnot and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So when I curate a lot, I'm trying to make sure that when my buyer Pick, um, opens up their package that they can just start listing stuff right away. That's so, awesome. Now, how do are your prices per piece like half of what you would typically pay at a thrift store, or are they comparable to what you pay at a thrift store? I think it. I think it depends um, on the thrift store because you have you know certain thrift stores that um, prices have gotten higher, but then you still have um, like mom and pop thrift stores that the prices are are. Probably, I'm probably more comparable to mom and pop than I am like, uh, okay, you know, chain thrift stores. So but, when you're doing the bulk orders to your customers, yeah, are are you dictating the size or are they or can it be either or? Well, what I explain to my buyers is that um, these lots are curated sight unseen to them. Um, because when I did try to present lots and show pictures and provide a manifest and everything, it was, a, it was like, you know, people were trying to pick the lots apart. Well, can I just have this and whatever else? And I said, okay, I can't do this. I don't have time for this. So, you know, I know that there's some people that don't feel comfortable purchasing something without seeing it first. And that might not be my buyer, but for those who want to take a chance and, and realize, okay, well, if I don't like what she sends me, then I just won't do business with her anymore. But what if I do like it? And I found this great source, you know? Um, so yeah, I let them know that it's based on availability. So if they say I'm interested in just plus size or, you know, whatever else, um, I will tell them, I'll see what I can put together for you, but I can't, you know, guarantee it. Or if, if I cannot fill an entire order of what they asked for, I'll let them know, Hey, I was able to find some of what you asked for, but you know, are you okay with the rest of the pieces being in other sizes or whatever? So I wonder, do, do you think some of your buyers are sourcing from you for their own personal to wear for themselves? Um, I think I have um, had a few buyers that was purchasing for personal wardrobe expansion um, because I've also, so once I started sourcing like this and, you know, that first um, person that I was connected with, that first source, and now that people have kind of know what I do. I've made a lot more connections with people. So I have a lot of different pickups scheduled, um, you know, from different places and um, consignment liquidations, just a whole bunch of different stuff, you know, and I cut really good deals with them to take it all. And I have to sort through the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, and find out what's sellable and what isn't. Um, but at any rate, when I first started doing this, I had so much. Um, and before the bulk business, started taking off, I went to the thrift, or not the thrift, the flea market. And oh. I was selling at the flea market. Yeah. Um, and then I would meet people at the flea market and I would give them my business card. And I said, hey, you know, if you want to come shop, um, you know, where my storage location is, you can come in and look. So I've had some women come to buy some business attire for themselves. And I mean, she she was like, oh my God, you have so much stuff. I said, yeah, I know. That's awesome. <laughs> you, know, you know, I don't know how you would answer, but how much stuff you got there right now? You got a lot. I mean, is there mountains there behind us that we can't see? Or what's going on? There? Oh, here. Okay, no. This right here is actually just 
my listed inventory on eBay and I have it set up in the banker box system. Um, and behind me is where I would usually take pictures for items that I list in my store. But I went ahead and um, just hung up some pieces. Um, and I can bring them closer if you want, just to kind of show the type of items that I come across. Cause I know a lot of people are curious. They want to know, like, are you trying to send me stuff from faded glory and target? Like, or is it like nice stuff, you know? So this I thought was a really cute dress for spring. Yeah. Um, and I was doing research on it. It's from the editor's market. So it doesn't seem like it's very popular in, um, us but for someone who isn't afraid to ship internationally i feel like this dress would still sell quite well and would probably sell for if i was listing this i would probably list it at uh, 19.99 um or maybe even 24.99 you know um so it would definitely be you know a good investment to have in your lot and then um this piece right here is a vintage polo by Ralph Lauren, um, double-breasted blazer. Nice. And, yeah. So this is really nice, and it has the the um. So nice, press nice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I know this will sell pretty fast. Now I come across a lot of suits like this, but I have not sold much in bulk yet because I'm still trying to figure out. It'll be a, it'll definitely be a higher unit price than my my typical stuff because the uh, ROI will be much higher. Like this blazer could probably sell for about seventy eighty dollars. So yeah. I'm not you know I'm not gonna let it go for the same price as I would for something that could sell for twenty five thirty dollars. When you put your lots together. Yeah. So you know I don't want to bore with the rest, but there's just you know most of the stuff I have is business and business casual attire. Um. So, you know, I get a lot of questions about certain brands if I have available. And um, most of the time, I, uh, if it's like a, a casual brand, I don't usually come across that very often because of the, the connections that I've made um, are all kind of along the same lines. But for those that are interested in selling, um, you know, men's and women's <laughs> um, career wear, I've got you. Okay. <laughs> Mix lots. Do you put guys, men's and women's in the, the yes. same lot? Oh, okay. Yep, yep. So how big is a? I mean, how how big does a lot get? So when someone's buying a lot, do you sell? Do you send like five hundred pieces of clothing, fifty pieces of clothing? Let me see. Um, so typically, um, my average lot, I would say I'm sending, um, maybe twenty-five to forty pieces yeah. at a time. Um, and I do offer a sample lot that a lot of people take advantage of, and it's just 10 pieces. Um, so it gives them, you know, a chance to see what I have. And then when they reorder the lot min minimum increases, but you know, I'm kind of in, in between. Cause again, if you're, if you're buying in bulk from a, a different liquidator, usually the lot minimum is a lot higher and yeah. I try to keep it reasonable. So I'm a, a great start for someone who's just starting off with buying in bulk, you know, because I, I feel like it's a, a less risky investment because, you know, my prices are a lot more affordable at this point than it would be if you were to go, I don't even know who to compare it to. I'm, I don't really compare myself to anybody, but you know what I mean? Like there's just certain places that will say, okay, well, you can buy X amount of pieces, but you have to spend a minimum of, you know, $250 or whatever. You know, my minimum is much lower than that. Um, I, is the shipping price a lot to get, you know, because if I'm going to buy a bulk for you, I know I'm pay paying for the clothing. Is the shipping or do you use the flat rate boxes or try to? Um, well, the flat rate box um, is what I use for my sample lots. So it gets to the customer fast and I'm able to fit the 10 pieces inside of a large flat rate. Um, anything um, beyond that, I actually use um, UPS ground. So that has so far been the most uh, cost effective method of shipping. And it just depends on, on the location. They're more dimensional than anything for their prices. So, you know, I, I just do what I can sometimes if it's a really large order instead of putting it in this huge box, because I know because of the dimensions, it'll make it more expensive. I'll put it in, you know, I'll separate it into multiple boxes. Okay. But I think the I mean, I, I could probably send 500 pieces. I have not sent <laughs> that many as of yet. Um, Kim, Kim okay. just to me. She wants 500 pieces. <laughs> 500? Okay, I'll get that invoice right over to you, Kim. <laughs> so do you, do you allow pickups or are they shipments only? Um. Oh, well, I've had, 
I guess I would. I could arrange a pickup if they were local. Yeah. That's a good idea. I think you should be your first local customer, huh? <laughs> yeah. I've, I've invited you to come, but we're so busy. We, we always mean to get together for lunch and, you know, yeah. So, so how long has the, the wholesale lot business been going on for you? Um, about two years now. And going well, I take it. That's why you're on the show. We're talking about yeah. it. Yes, yes, it's it's picking up definitely, and I think the more that people have been purchasing from me, hopefully word of mouth is spreading, so they get their lots, they see, oh, she's got really nice stuff, um, you know, and they're happy with it, so maybe they're telling a, a fellow reseller friend, hey, have you checked this out? I don't know, but it's it's definitely been picking up for me. I've been a lot more busier um, nowadays, which I'm grateful for, nice. and, um, you know, I have the two Facebook groups. Um, I started the clothing reseller group because I was a part of the thrifting board for a long time, and I'm, I'm a bit more quieter. I'm not extremely active, but I, you know, try to dip in every now and again, yeah. um, but at any rate, I just noticed a lot of the groups that were available on Facebook, there was nothing that catered just to clothing sellers. And a lot of people actually have this disdain for selling clothes. Oh, I don't bother with clothes. And I mean, to each his own, I understand it. It, it can be a, a pain in the, the tail to you know, measure and all that other stuff that, that goes along with listing clothes. But there um, are people that love fashion and you know, they see that used clothing has a huge profit margin, in my opinion, you know, even more so than, than new. Because a lot of times when you're sourcing new with tags, your um, unit price is going to eat a lot into your profit. Um, so anyway, I started this group and I am very adamant about people not trying to barge up in my group and sell their stuff and whatever else, you know. So I said, it's not a buy sell group. Don't promote, you know, whatever, whatever. And then I started advertising my bulk in the group because I'm the owner of the group. I figure I could do <laughs> whatever, you know, but then people were calling me out on my, my shit, you know, I don't know if I can curse on here, but they're like, well, I thought you said no selling or whatever, <laughs> you know, and I was like, all right, fine. That, that's okay. So I started a sister group um, and, you know, told I have it in my questions and, you know, just, I displayed it for people to see, hey, if you join this group because you want to buy in wholesale, then join this group instead. Oh, and good. then, yeah, so they're in this group. So the first group has almost 10,000 members and the second group has um, about 1,500 members now, I think. Oh. So it's well, it, sounds up. Like, it sounds like you're really organized, that you have your system kind of yes. wired. Yes. Um, it yeah. took a minute, but it's getting there. <laughs> it's getting yeah. there. All right, so let's uh, let's look at some of your scores and duds for your your personal sales. Okay. And real quick, the tie that you sold for two fifty or two and a quarter. Everyone's asking, what was it? It was a. I'm gonna chop this name up. Ermen Gildo yeah. Vegna, um, and it was a specific line from from that brand. Um, Kindisi something or the other i i'm totally chopping it up but um it it has like um it's just a very special tie and you know i looked at comp so what i priced it at was right on par with what they were selling for on ebay and it sold so quick at that price and it just blew my mind yeah. <laughs> all right so speaking of blue and mind blowing minds we have uh some trousers that look like i would never even pause at them and you sold for 72 dollars um, so those are actually, let me pull this up to the big, wow. uh, big screen. Yes, Lafayette 148 is um, a higher end brand that you could find at like Nordstrom's and whatever else. These are 100% wool um, and they sold for $71.95 and they actually sold internationally. So the buyer wound up paying about $96 altogether. And she emailed me after she bought it. And she said, I'm very familiar with, with, you know, these pants and I'm so excited. I love the fit. Like she had no problem um, buying these Jews pants for almost a hundred dollars. She was thrilled. Yeah. Wow. And then a brand that I've always wanted to find. Oh, look, I got an offer on pants. Let's, let's take a look at that while we're here. Go ahead. All right, well, I'll, I'll I'll counter on that. Okay, so I've never found this brand. Not that I looked that hard, but I always want to. St. John. Oh, yeah. Never. I actually I'm sell quite a bit of St. John, so I am very excited whenever I find um, a, a piece. Um, 
And I think that it's starting, resellers are starting to get more um, educated about the brand. But I think a lot of people at first glance, they don't see it. You know, I remember somebody in my group said, oh, what's the appeal with St. John? Like it's ugly or whatever. And I mean, it, so many people started going in on her or him or whomever it was. And it's like, yeah, it, it may not be appealing to you, but when you're sourcing, you have to see past what you would wear, Absolutely. you know? Um, and this, this piece is kind of like Chanel-ish to me. So I just knew, impressed with the colors, I figured it would probably sell closer to spring because it's it's very vibrant spring colors, and um, you know it sold for um, one thirty, so that was great. And, and they like a size two. Yes. Okay. How many size twos are there out there? But oh so my many. god. Well, and here's the thing. Can I just say this because it irks me so bad. It's one of my pet peeves. I get a lot of people that say that you know, they'll even have like something really good in their hands. Oh, but it was a size two. So it's trash. Is it really no. <laughs> like, it's not trash just because it's a smaller size. Um, but they hear from other resellers or maybe from their little experience that they have that only plus size sells, but that's not true. You know, cause there are people shopping on eBay and you know, this global platform market that we're on, um, in all different shapes of, and sizes. So don't be afraid to list something that's a size zero or you know whatever, because somebody out there is gonna see it and love it and buy it. And that's it, you know? Yeah, yeah. you'd be the one to sell. If nobody else wants to sell the size twos, you sell them. So and and you Mills know? had a great response in the chat. Us skinny bitches need clothes too. So Hi, thank you, <laughs> <laughs> right? All right, so up ties. There's a $120 tie. Mm -hmm. Wow. So this was um, a really great pickup for me. Um, I had a scheduled pickup from one of my sources and it had a bunch of ties in it. And in that lot, there was probably about seven Hermes ties and seven Ferragamo ties. And I almost fainted. Oh my. <laughs> I almost fainted. I was like, oh, wow. Um, and, but before I started listing them on eBay, I definitely did my research. And I feel like that's very important because Hermes is a brand that is highly um, knocked off or whatever. So I did a lot of reading um, and there's actually some really great articles online that will um, help you decide if what you have is real or not. So it just took a few key points for me to um, look, you know, if you go to the third picture and it shows the, the label, Jason, Yep. Um, you know, you can look at that label and there's like how many spokes are on the wheel that helps determine if it's real or not. Like it was very fascinating oh, to me. Good to um, know. Yeah, just stuff like that. And um, down to the spacing of the letters and um, everything. But just holding it in my hands, I could tell that it was, you know, legit. So I felt confident to list it. Yeah. <clears throat> and then we got this little uh, jacket here, this brand I ain't never heard of. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> me neither never heard of it really when i first looked at it it almost got rejected i was just like oh but i decided to look it up and when i looked up the comps i was like wow um this one sold for 90 um i did initially have it up for 100 um they did pay for shipping so that was good nice. but if i would have held out I probably could have sold this jacket for like 150. I don't know what it is about it. I know it's Gore-Tex, so that's a good thing to look out for. Um, a lot of men in the um, like blue collar industry, they wear like fire retardant type stuff. So, um, you know, and it's a size medium, again, a smaller size, but that it, before it sold, it got up to probably close to 20 watchers. So people were on it and finally it sold for the 89.95. Good job. But they all can't be scores, can they, Jessica? No, no, they can't. <laughs> no, they can't. So this jacket, I had high hopes for this. I did. I thought it was cute. It's a size 16. So I was like, you know, all right. Um, and, and again, that doesn't matter to me. If it was a two, I'd still list it. But um, it's a it's soft glove leather. So I just thought that it was going to go for big bucks. So I had to list it for a long time. And um kept dropping the price and dropping the price and finally it sold for the $17.95. But um brand go you know it goes Hermes, Gucci, <laughs> and then Old Navy. <laughs> um so what I did with this because all of those um dresses 
were in like new condition and the buyer actually left me feedback that indicated as such they're like new well they i think they were actually samples so they probably were yeah. never worn um and they're, I said, okay, they're really nice they're pretty and i when i saw how the colors all tied in with each other i was like okay i don't usually list old navy but you know if i put them all together then at least it'll be um worth my time to you know go ahead and list them so it, it is it's a dud but at the same time it's not because i felt good about you know the 3150 that i got it and they paid for the shipping so yay right, so people are asking your ebay store so there it is no mm -hmm. the number two retail prices no to retail prices mm -hmm. and more importantly do you want to give out the names of your facebook groups people want to buy some stuff from you yeah um yes yes so the first group is a support group um for clothing sellers and it's uh, on facebook as ebay clothing resellers group and he's gonna pull that up for you let's <clears throat> beat the dodgers woohoo mm -hmm. opening day baseball go mariners so there it is right there and I do have a few questions for people when they answer the group um, or when, <laughs> to answer when they join the group. And I am I really try to keep the group um, as positive as possible, just like Jason does in, in his group, um, you know, and keep everything civil in there. Um, that's so that's that. And then it actually shows, um, let me see, suggested groups right there. Better than the bins clothing source. So that is the sister group. And yep. it's just two simple questions. Are you a clothing seller? And then just kind of asking, hey, are you someone that would be interested in buying a lot without seeing what the brands are and knowing what the sizes are? Yes or no. You know, you answer that and you're good to go. Um, and basically, I, I do have other ways that I sell my, my stuff, but if you're in my group, you kind of get first dibs on the items that I have available. So that's a good perk of being in the group. Um, and I'm always dropping content in the group. I'll do haul videos. And the last one I did was actually like a what not to expect. Um, Cause I just wanted to show people like, you know, if you can imagine, if you're trying to imagine what I would send you, this is what you wouldn't see in one of my lots. And, you know, there's just a lot of stuff with um, like pilling and the stains and stuff like that. That stuff automatically gets recycled. I would never send that to anybody on purpose. Um, so that's that. Nice. Well, yeah. that, that was awesome show. Like I, it's, it was, uh, Thank you know, you. Like I always say I loved all my guests, but it was such a different, angle that we've had about anything really it was so unique and mm -hmm. and, I, and i could see the chat going man i want to see this group and i want to i want to i want to try out a uh a uh a lot from her and uh it's it's so cool so um, thank I'm you excited to have you on and, and uh i definitely want to think I, I definitely want to think i definitely want to have you back on we'll talk about lots again in the future oh wait wait i had a picture too you forgot to show the picture Oh, oh yay! <laughs> that's my boy. That's my son. And he's a huge help when um, I'm doing these scheduled pickups. He's my muscle, and <laughs> you know to, we, we're working on it together. But he's always so happy to to help me um, get these bags going and everything. But yeah, I rented a cargo van for that pickup because there was probably about fifty, sixty bags of clothes, um, and I didn't think that they would fit all in my truck. So found a great niche for yourself you know just a business style type yeah, That's awesome. yeah absolutely and thank you for having me i was so excited to be on the show oh yeah. thanks for coming on and that's kind of what we want to impart on you guys tonight is you know we're all going down this path doing the same thing we're all selling online but some of us take these different avenues so i started mm -hmm. teaching and i started leading groups and jessica found her her bulk niche and and debbie's got her book thing and you know mm -hmm. kim's got her purse thing so you do a little bit of everything, but you start finding where you, you find your groove. And once you find your groove, hustle. Work Absolutely. Hard. My, my bow is falling. Work hard. <laughs> you know, you, you know, the harder you work, the more you can enjoy life. And, you know, money might not buy you happiness, but it does buy you expensive bottles of rum. So keep right. going. <laughs> so do me a favor. Hit the like button down below. I see we got almost 200 viewers watching live. We only got four day likes. So hit that like button for me. Subscribe to the channel. Like I said, we'll be back on Saturday. My mom and I selling past their expiration date, being thrifty or 50. We're going to answer every question you've got about eBay open. 
the events surrounding it, getting to and fro Vegas, getting around Vegas. We'll we'll lay down all the knowledge you need, and uh, it's great. And and while we were chatting tonight, Brian Burke, one of the uh, execs at eBay, reached out to me to talk to me about eBay Open and thanked me for promoting oh. it. And so I'm like, cool. Fabulous. Just those chatting. I was like, oh, I'm all excited, Brian. It's gonna be a great event. And so uh, we're, we have a group called Going to eBay Open 2017, and he reminded me tonight to change it to 2018 to start talking about some more. So. Uh, it'll oh, be yeah. a great show on Saturday. So if you can't tune in live, you can always tune in after the fact. Just subscribe to the channel. Jessica, thank you. We got to get together soon. We haven't seen each other. and We got to hang out. So Absolutely. I'll have to catch a flight out there. Yeah, we'll definitely hang. Debbie, thank you for uh, thank you for being the co-host tonight. And if you hurry, I, I just the sun setting here. Get back out there. Get oh, your yeah. in the sand and go <laughs> enjoy the sunset. So, and uh, yes. thank you to my studio audience. Yay. <laughs> Back of all the questions, everybody, and thank you to the live <laughs> audience and anyone who watched after the fact. Love all you guys, and I'll see you on Saturday with my mom. Bye. Bye. Bye.